Peace viewers, today's episode touches upon a fascinating enigma of psychology and a theory created by yours truly, amply dubbed the Honeycomb Theory. There is a time, and in that time, a space. In this eventual space so far out of nowhere exists something. Something that exists in all the living and does not disappear when life ends. That something is located on a distant place. It is located near you, next to you, within you. Follow me into the recesses of what exists on and in between the darkness and light in your mind, in your heart, and even in your eyes, where some say the soul's window lies. Drift with us where truth and illusion isn't far, caught in a deadlock, which will win. Welcome to Truth Talks and Theory. Please stand by. Our souls and minds, some say, have rooms, doors, and windows. But I find oft it to be cubicles, sectors of closed off space in our minds and hearts. Our thoughts whir and buzz. Our hands become dyed blue and red with stark contrast. Why must we as human beings be at odds with our worlds? Sweet as honey, our desires loosely drip, yet at times rotten molasses. Many times we deal with many inner voices, and as our last video suggests, that compel and tug us in many different and at times different directions. As we grow and mature in these ways, we become indolent to our personalities, and our minds become painted in varying colors. Simply put, we have thoughts, desires, and views we didn't necessarily seek out. The idea behind who we are is a complex one, and today we will delve into some psychology. Let us first describe the two main concepts we deal with here at Truth Talks and Theory, virtues and vices. Human virtue is something we describe as valuable characteristics that have objective value in its attainment with the true goal of being a pleasing creation to God, and vices being described as human deficiencies in terms of character flaws and weaknesses that displease God. To return to what was the topic at hand, I have found that we are what we think and our choices shape who we will be, and in turn that means what we choose is what begins to sink into our minds. Our minds have a capacity, like most things it has a maximum. In that maximum, a human being begins to fill their mind with what they choose. There are some virtues that can increase this capacity, such as growth and intelligence. However, the point of this theory is our characteristics are compartmentalized. Keep note, the amount of honeycombs results in a sophisticated human being, areas for creativity, desire, understanding, and emotion. They each begin to fill a part of the mind. Thus, we come full circle to the name of the theory, the honeycomb. As the bees, which are our thoughts, begin to bring pollen, which is our action, it begins to be stored in these combs as honey, which is the characteristic. When at full capacity, it disallows any more to fill it. What we do either fuels a virtue or vice, and in that way it begins to shape us as human beings. The fascinating part about this is many people would lead to believe a human cannot have two contradicting characteristics, such as an honest human being cannot have deceptive tendencies. While in whole this strikes as true, as a person that is prone to telling the truth would be unlikely to lie, it is dependent on the varying degrees of that virtue and vice. We have found honesty lies in a larger virtue that is called sincerity. Being a sincere human being is about saying and expressing what you mean, not simply telling the truth. Such as if a person were to ask how your day was, 
a sincere human being would ask that question, not in passing, but with the actual intention of caring about the person's day. And lying is the polar existence of honesty, and lies, no pun intended, in the larger looming vice of deception. Now if we take the two and put them together, candor is another piece of sincerity which means frankness or sincerity of expression. And we take a piece in deception, which in this case is sophistry, meaning a method of argument that is seemingly plausible, though actually invalid and misleading. The honeycomb theory explains how a human being, due to compartmentalized characteristics, can contain clashing slash contradictory aspects contained both in the same person. In the case of candor and sophistry, which are branches of sincerity and deception respectively, can both be in one and the same human being. It would look a little like a person who is frank and means what they express, but they are arguing for something they know is false just because it benefits them in some way such as to care about an injustice and passionately show disdain for an injustice and in the moment of the argument produce an arbitrary yet plausible figure for the sake of argument, even though they themselves know that it is a false number. This sounds like something an adolescent, careless, enthused youth would do, but I assure you all human beings can carry such an example. I'm looking at you, Grandpa. No, but seriously, any age. I don't actually mean my Grandpa. I have never met him, nor do I know very much about his life. The last thing to note on the honeycomb is that there are natural clashing characteristics and as such if one were to develop one rapidly before the other in a way like cells, those cells would aggressively push out the contrasting ones take majority of the capacity. However, if they are both acted on throughout one's life simultaneously, both grow at the same rate, you will house both characteristics despite how contrasting or contradicting they may appear. Take a look at this diagram here. Moving on. So does this mean we are stuck with the choices we made and they fill our combs and that's that? No. The honeycomb also explains because actions fill these combs, we can safely assume inaction would, even if slowly, disempower the agent affecting us. Here's a glimpse of what truth theory comprises of. We take, say, a virtue or vice. For analogy's sake, let's say this apple is a vice. We take this bad apple and peel its layers. We see what its skin, its juices, and nice pulpy innards are comprised of, and even the core and seeds. Then we break down how to effectively maneuver around it to make sure we do not swallow any bad apples. Likewise, to said virtue, we dissect it and we find out how to attain and ultimately use these virtues for good. Tune in for our next video where we go in and explain our book, Truth Theory. Now I shall leave you with a bit of poetry. Ourselves, our blocks, our paths, our clocks, we rest upon the shoulders of will, all a collective of naught but choice.